Welcome to the Inspire to Invest podcast, where we're sharing stories from real estate investors and how investing has changed their lives. This episode of Inspire to Invest has been brought to you by Conduit Asset Management, Five Oaks Land Development, and Stonehearth Properties. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Inspire to Invest podcast. I have Gareth West with me today. I promise he sounds so much better than I do. So I'll read a very short bio and then we'll just die right in. So Gareth, starting from the grounds up, has been flipping homes since 20 years ago and shortly after the 2008 housing and financial crisis, decimating real estate values in the South. He raised funds to purchase a portfolio of residential homes outside of Atlanta, which he held onto until 2014. West, De- West Developments was established the following year in Montreal, and Gareth has been doing really great work since. So without further ado, welcome, Gareth. I'd love to know a little bit more about your story and where things started for you before real estate. Well, first of all, thank you so much for this invitation. And it's always uh, a fun experience to discuss real estate and, and investing uh, in particular. Um, as you said, uh, 20 years ago, I began flipping homes. Um, and then that kind of snowballed into um, just seeing other areas of real estate into which uh, investments could be lucrative. Um, and as you pointed out, the um, the 08 crisis, uh, which unfortunately decimated so many, um, though it did create opportunities for others. I was fortunate enough to meet the f- founder of Realtor.com, as it were, and wow. um, he gave me some advice, um, which was, of course, to invest in a particular market outside of Atlanta, yeah. which I did. Um, and the, the, we did very well on the investment, not only because of the uh, appreciation that the properties um, realized after having, as we said, been um, so heavily reduced in their yeah. value, but because it was in those years, uh, for the first time in maybe half a century, that the Canadian dollar was at par with the U.S. dollar. Yeah. Uh, so by buying, you know, in that year um, at, at with a par dollar, it was quite easy then to, in 2014, make the decision to sell when the dollar was comparatively at, um, you know, about 40 points higher. Yeah. Uh, so that, that 40 point um, profit margin without even that which was uh, achieved on the homes themselves was substantial. Yeah, I mean, that's where my real estate investing started, not in Atlanta, but in Florida. I bought later than you, but I bought when the dollar was at par as well. So I held on to it and obviously sold it, made most of my money on the exchange four years later. So I can appreciate that. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, I, obviously more people lost than, than one in that, in, in that crisis. So yeah. So, um, now, then just kind of try to parlay my profits into um, a purchase of some residential land in the Montreal area where I had a vision for custom construction. Um, right. and I felt as though there was a market there uh, in, in that particular area. And uh, I proceeded to build these custom homes um, until really last year yeah. when um, <laughs> as we saw the rise in interest rates became preventative um, for that type of custom construction. Yeah. Uh, it was just the, the houses were not going to sell as they had previously. Um, and in fact, I then took the opportunity to move to Toronto, where I'm located now, yeah. and began investing in um, multi-unit residential buildings. So just going back, when you started flipping houses, like what was the catalyst? Like what were you doing before you started flipping houses? Um, that was at a time when the U.S. dollar was quite strong. And there was tremendous opportunity for, um, for export uh, in fact, I was in the car business, exporting cars briefly, and which allowed me to raise sufficient capital to, to start my first flip. Yeah. Um, and those went, those went well. Uh, I, I had a partner at the time uh, with whom um, we, we split profit and then snowballed into um, the purchase of other flips. And we really stayed with the flipping uh, for that duration until um, shortly before the, uh, the financial crisis yeah. and had accumulated... Um, you know, some, some, some savings with which um, the purchase in Atlanta was made. Yeah. And there, there were other opportunities. I think one of the things uh, about investing is that there are so many opportunities and it's difficult to choose <laughs> the most, the most profitable one or yeah. one that's profitable at all. And, and Lord knows uh, I've certainly made my share of mistakes um, yeah. though. Fortunately have made more good decisions than bad ones over the years. Yeah. Now, how did you choose to loop back around to Toronto? Because obviously Toronto's not really the cheapest place to invest. So what kind of multifamily are you focusing on here? Well, that's a good point. In fact, mm-hmm. I should have been more specific because I am not investing in the GTA. Uh, okay. To your point, I do feel as though um, it, it's 
overvalued perhaps, yeah. or it may be, maybe that's the wrong term, but that it won't appreciate as quickly as other adjacent communities to the GTA. Um, and so I'm looking in London, um, there's a lot of opportunity, Waterloo, I think. Yeah. Um, Niagara is uh, uh, up and coming with infrastructure. Yeah. And I, I believe these are areas that will experience large appreciation over the next 10 years. Yeah. And much more so in fact, than um, the GTA itself. <coughs> So now you talked about obviously making some good decisions, hopefully more good than bad. When you look back at your career over the last 20 years, what do you think is like, you think is the most success or the most accomplishment that you have? Without question, it was the, um, the Atlanta purchase. Um, that was, you know, it, it, it was a home run for, in many respects and for many different reasons. <clears throat> um, and, you know, these, these things were often based on timing as we see. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I think is likely to happen with, with the interest rates as high as they are is that the current owners of residential buildings, um, some of whom may not be running their, their buildings as well as others, yeah. uh, the result of which is going to be the foreclosure or that they won't be able to um, continue to pay the, uh, the ever-rising uh, mortgage payments that they have. Yeah. And I think that there will be deals upcoming um, as those maybe poor, um, those owners who have run their businesses more poorly uh, are, are shifted out of the market. Yeah. And one thing I've heard as well is just the amount of um, baby boomers that own portfolios and their children don't want to carry them forward. So just based on that, there should be a lot of inventory when it comes to the multifamily space for apartments that could be potentially coming up in the coming years. Um, now, when you look back at lessons, so what do you think is like one of the hardest lessons that you've faced so far? I feel as though... Um not trusting my instincts sooner. Um, for, for example, I, I should have left Montreal a year before I did. Um, and by staying the year longer, um, you know, the, the, the projects that I had ongoing at the time um, weren't very successful or not certainly not um, to the standard that I try to hold myself. Um, and that was also true uh, in, in, even in going uh, to Atlanta and maybe even in selling Atlanta. I, I should have probably sold a year early. So not trusting my gut. I had those uh, intuitions and then just really didn't follow them. Um, and, you know, they, although those both ended up being profitable, not to the extent that they could have been. Yeah, I no, understood. <clears throat> Is there anything that you would define as like some of the bigger obstacles that you faced? I think that um, as an entrepreneur, you don't have the luxury of, of the uh, uh, salary and you're constantly looking for um, the next win, the next winning project. And that can be stressful. Um, and particularly if uh, in between wins, there's a, a, a loss or a fail um, or one that's not as successful. Um, so those things uh, can, can mount up and, and make you question your, your choices, question your decisions. Um, and I'm, I'm certainly glad now, um, we're, given where I am, that I've uh, stuck to my guns, though there were there were certainly moments when I, I, I doubted myself and, and questioned whether I made the right decision. Yeah. yeah, I think that's normal. And I think that when you're an entrepreneur and investor, it can be very isolating. So sometimes it's easy because you wallow in that, right? Like, who do you bounce ideas off of? And like, even just fleshing something out just to give yourself the confidence. No, like, no, this is okay. So I think that you're not alone in in feeling that way sometimes. Absolutely. Um, and, and to your point, um, you know, having the confidence in, in oneself is, is so necessary yeah. um, and difficult sometimes to, to have. Yeah, no, agreed. So we're just going to take a really brief break for a word from our sponsors and we'll be right back. Time and time again, we see investors struggling to manage multiple projects effectively. We can help. Meet Conduit Asset Management. We assist real estate investors by bringing their property to highest and best use through consulting on every phase of their project, from initial due diligence review, project scope and management, all the way through to refinance assistance. With extensive knowledge of the steps involved in bringing commercial real estate projects to their highest and best use, Conduit can save you valuable time by knowing when and how to start key processes before they're needed. So why struggle to juggle multiple projects on your own? Let Conduit Asset Management help you make the most of your investments. Maximizing your return on your real estate investment and minimizing your risk. Conduit Asset Management. Thanks again for following along with this episode of Inspired to Invest. In addition to real estate, investing, and running my own brand experience agency for 18 years, I also published a book called The Accidental Entrepreneur in October of 2021. 
This is my story, and it chronicles how I turned tragedy into triumph to embrace my destiny in entrepreneurship. If you're interested in picking up a copy, you can find the link at serenahomesrealtor.com, and you can also find my link tree with all of the retailers in the details below. Thanks again for your support. Stone Hearth Properties and Five Oaks Land Development present the Stone Hearth Mutual Fund Trust. One great fund, two great projects. Our MFT can accept a variety of registered funds and cash to diversify your portfolio. An MFT is one of the most tax efficient ways to invest your capital and is widely used in real estate. Our MFT offers a competitive interest rate, flexible two year term and a dip option. Contact us for more info via email or by visiting shproperties.ca or fiveoaksld.ca. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Inspire to Invest podcast. I have Gareth West here talking about his career that's spanned 20 years as a real estate investor. So we talked about some of your successes, your challenges and obstacles. What do you think is the craziest thing that you've ever experienced as an investor? <coughs> Excuse me. Um... I think uh, there was a, a couple of properties where uh, it was clear, made clear by the municipality that the zoning was going to align with um, the project that we had intended um, for that property upon its purchase. Yeah. Um, and then when, after the purchase, uh, in fact, two separate properties has happened, um, they, they went ahead and, and, and didn't change the zoning as they said they, they were going to. And uh, there ended up you know, being stuck with these uh, properties with which there was nothing to do. Uh, ultimately, however, we were able to um, persuade the city that um, these were uh, projects that were going to benefit the communities. Um, so, I mean, those are, I guess, not really crazy examples, but for us at the time, it was uh, it was quite difficult because, you know, we invested a ton of money into these uh, these particular properties, and it seemed at, at, at a, for a, some time that they were going to be thoroughly useless. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something that even other people I've spoken to as well is like every day there's those challenges or setbacks and just how you, you know, have to face them and overcome them is just part of the journey. Right. And that's where you learn and hopefully you can try to minimize those issues going forward. You mentioned that you obviously got out of Montreal, like what kind of things like you talked about London and these different areas, like you have projects underway right now, or are you just looking at the moment? No, in fact, I have two uh, buildings under contract uh, now uh, one of which is to sign later this month and the right. other uh, to sign early uh, next month. And these are properties that uh, will require, or at least that I intend on uh, rehabilitating um, and, and really trying to um, increase the values of those properties, refinance and uh, you know proceed again, kind of the Burr method. Um, yeah. uh, and so I, I feel as though there's a tremendous opportunity there. I also uh, will try to take advantage of Pardon me, the CMHC financing program offered by the government of Canada um, permits um, rather than a 25-year uh, amortization on a uh, on any given note um, for a 40 to 50-year amortization, which uh, everyone we can see would be beneficial. In yeah. addition to which, um, they, uh, can, you can get financing of up to 95% loan to value uh, as opposed to the traditional 75. Yeah. So these, the, the combination of those two things almost result in a free building once the renovations have been completed. Yeah. Uh, so you have that initial investment, you're hoping for between an 18 to 24 month turnaround, uh, after which you get your investment dollars back and you can go on to build your portfolio yeah. uh, maintaining this building for really uh, pennies on the dollar. Yeah, yeah, and I think that one thing with that is that <clears throat> we had someone speaking to us about that uh, at an event I was at recently and just also trying to roll with the changes. You know, they released this MLA select program and now they're going back and they're adjusting it, right? So for some people that are already applying, now they have to go back and, you know, they're dealing with different circumstances, right? So just knowing that anything is bound to change at any time. So it's a great project, great program. But just know, like, you still have to expect the unexpected sometimes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, when you think back, is there anything that you would define as the best advice that you've ever been given? Well, um, at the risk of repeating myself um, uh, from earlier, the <laughs> it, it was it was meeting um, the, the the founder of, of Realtor.com, and it was uh, it just so happened. I mean, I, I'm a fitness enthusiast, and uh, I met him in the gym. Uh, he and I ended up, you know, training together, and and he was very um, uh, extremely humble man, but uh, came out with uh, the, the the reality that uh, he had founded this incredible company, and and you know, they began to exchange uh, some information and, and share some of the, the tips that he had. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, 
one of the things I, I know that I've done well is, is to take risks, um, to not be averse to risks. And um, I, I, I went pretty much all in on that advice and it really paid off. Yeah. Now, what was it about that particular area that he felt like was so strong? Because obviously the states in general, right. there was different markets, but what was it about that particular market that he thought was going to be good? There were three markets he suggested to me. There was the College Park area outside of Atlanta. There was um, a, an area in, in da- just outside of Dallas, Texas, and um, Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. Um, and so just for, for myself, geographically, it made sense to keep myself on the East Coast as I was living in Montreal at the time. Um, and specifically to that area, um, these were brand new houses that had lost 50% of their value on account of never having been um, occupied. Uh, so they were foreclosed on and uh, taken over by the bank, and they, be, the bank just had to recover their, um, their 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 investment, and and they were able to do so at pennies on the dollar or at fifty points on, uh, fifty cents on the dollar. Yeah. And so that I, I think you know he obviously knew that I, I certainly didn't at the time, um, but when I went to investigate, he was absolutely right, and um, the, the the thing came off exactly as he said it would. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's amazing. And I think obviously it's good to have that intel and then do your own due diligence to back it up. Absolutely. Now, for anyone that's watching that's a brand new investor, they're not really sure like how to get started. Is there anything that you would say to them to kind of help them carve out their path? Um, yeah, I, I, I think that it depends on um, what dollar amount that the uh, investor has. Um, a, and I think that there are good things that can be done um, given those, those amounts. Uh, I, I think flips are, 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 are starting to, um, to resume uh, profitability. Uh, of course, I'm here uh, in the uh, multi-unit residential space. I, I, I have confidence in that market as well. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I, I would maybe stay away from is, is, is uh, new construction. Uh, it's very difficult to get uh, construction financing right now. Yeah. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of time. And um, I, I just feel as though there are better places to put one's money. Yeah, no, I think that's part. I mean, I think there is a lot of opportunity as a developer, but maybe in terms of like being a consumer or something like that, then pre-construction can be challenging because it's totally out of your control, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, is there anything um, in terms of quotes, any particular quotes that you find really inspire you or motivate you? There is. Um, landlords become wealthier in their sleep. Um, and that just occurs to me. And, and, and one of the things, one of the reasons, in fact, that I left um, the, the residential construction and, and particularly the custom homes, what frustrated me, I was constantly liquidating my assets. And during COVID, I, I sold two homes uh, relatively close to each other. And both of the individuals to whom I sold them turned around within six months and nearly doubled their money. And I realized that would have been my profit. And, and the, the concept of constantly selling my assets was not one that I was any longer comfortable with. And it's for that reason, really, that I, I, I came to Toronto and, and, and am heavily committed now to the multi-unit residential and with a goal of uh, establishing a portfolio of residential doors um, that will accumulate uh, to accumulate wealth over time. Yeah. Now, with that said, do you have a particular financial freedom number? Like whether it's number of doors, cash flow, like what does that look like for you? What I, what I notice about this, because over the years I've had, this number has changed. And so um, I think it would be disingenuous to um, my, my previous self to suggest, I mean, the, the, the new number that, that I have uh, as, at, at any point in my life, as I've approached that number and what, from, you know, 10,000 to 100,000 to uh, on and on, as I approach that number, it's no longer the number yeah. and it changes. So, uh, you know, at the moment, uh, the idea of a thousand doors is, is, is nice. I think uh, that's you know, a relatively short-term goal. Uh, a longer-term goal is ten thousand doors. Um, and though I, I just, I just suspect that history will repeat itself. And as I approach that thousand-door yeah. uh, mark, I'll no longer be satisfied with that amount. Yeah, but I think that's important. Like it gives you that renewed sense of purpose or a new goal. Like it doesn't mean it doesn't change. <laughs> but because right. once you reach the pinnacle, it's kind of like okay, well, what next? You know, right. so that's not unusual. Okay, so I guess in terms of anyone that wants to get in touch with you, how can people find you? Uh, yeah, well, the website is westdevelopments.ca. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, Instagram, it being as strong as it is as a, a marketing tool, yeah. um, mine is west underscore Gareth. Okay, so we'll include that obviously below. And thank you for your time. For anyone that's watched this, 
and you'd like to see future episodes, please make sure you've subscribed and that you're following along at Inspired to Invest podcast on social. And remember, when you invest in yourself, the sky's the limit. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks to our sponsors, Conduit Asset Management, Five Oaks Land Development, and Stonehearth Properties for bringing you this episode of the Inspired to Invest podcast. The views represented on this podcast are for general information only and does not constitute investment or other professional advice or an offering of securities. The host and guests featured on Inspired to Invest make no representations as to the performance of any particular investment. Should you decide to make an investment, you are responsible for conducting your own review and analysis. It is recommended that you obtain independent legal accounting and tax advice from licensed professionals.